some lawmakers are more effective than others are, and we can measure those differences. And when we measure those differences, we find out a lot that we didn't know about how Congress works and what policies it produces. I've long been fascinated with the role, with the role that Congress as a legislative institution plays in producing policy. And in light of a constant discussion of the propensity of gridlock in Washington, D.C., I became increasingly interested in trying to understand whether gridlock really is pervasive across the U.S. House or whether there or not we can identify certain members of the U.S. House that are able to consistently break through the gridlock and despite whatever barriers may be put in their place, are able to consistently move policy through the legislative process, those that we call effective lawmakers. The Legislative Effectiveness Project is a collaborative effort between myself and Craig Bolden at the University of Virginia in which we're trying to come up with a systematic way to capture and measure whether or not individual legislators are effective or their variance in effectiveness from introducing or advancing their own legislative agendas. So what we've done is cultivate and devise what we refer to as the Legislative Effectiveness Score, which is a parsimonious summary statistic that captures for every member of the U.S. House how successful he or she is at moving their legislative agenda items, their bills, from introduction to ultimately being signed into law by the president, and as well as capturing the relative substantive significance of these measures. Using our legislative effectiveness scores, uh, we track down who are the 20 most effective lawmakers from the past 40 years. We feature them in the book and have looked for commonalities across these uh, individuals. We came up with five main habits uh, that they all uh, were pursuing or carrying forward uh, in their legislative activities. They come into groups, however, um, and one of those groups is perseverance. They have about a three to four percent chance when they introduce a bill of it becoming law. And if we think about that low, low success rate, what motivates somebody time and time again to introduce the same bills or refine those bills or work to build coalitions and move them forward? It takes some sense of uh, commitment to these issues, some expertise, some personal background, some connection to the district that allow them that level of perseverance. Once they have that, it's a question of how can they build the coalitions or be entrepreneurial with their institutional positions to help move these bills through the process. Uh, and the most effective lawmakers do build those coalitions, do look for compromises that don't give up on their underlying commitment to these issues to addressing public policy problems, but that can build up the majorities needed to move through the House and Senate and into law. <laughs>